Hello my friends, I am Marietta and I welcome you to Marietta's art channel. I have a treat for you, something unexpected, you'll have to find out as we go along. Today I will be sharing with you a bubble free casting tutorial using urethane resin. So let's go. I thought this would be a simple video, but of course not. Knowing me, I went on an adventure and I'm still looking forward to you commenting on it and watching the videos so you know what I'm talking about. But here we go, another adventure in the resin world. Before we venture into my casting room, which is my vacuum pressure pot room, I'd like to share with you a few mistakes that I made so this doesn't happen to you. That's why I want to share with you some of those steps to ensure you don't do what I did because I didn't follow all the rules and I'm kind of that way I don't follow rules. So if there's grass and it says do not step on the grass, I'll step on the grass to see what happens. So probably you don't want to do that with casting because it's expensive and takes time and a lot of equipment. So don't be like me with that. Here are some really perfect examples of what happened when I wasn't careful with moisture. Moisture is probably one of the most important things to keep in mind. That's moisture in the air, moisture in the lines, moisture in any of the materials we're placing inside. So here's what happens when moistures get into your pressure pot or your material. I'm gonna lift this up. This was a heartbreak, this was a big one. And I looked at it, it looked pretty clear and everything. But then I noticed this little white spot right there. That was not something I could use. And I used a lot of material and it was a heartbreak. This one right here, I, I don't know actually still what happened, but there's a bunch of bubbles on the sides and it's a rough edge. I think I probably moved the material before I put the pressure pot on, before it really got to work. So it's slushed around maybe on the inside. So one of the things to know is when you pour the material, you definitely did not want slushing inside the pressure pot because it will cover the edges of your mold and it will make these unsightly stains. Obviously you can um, sandpaper them off, but who wants to do that if you don't have to, right? And here are some other perfect examples of contamination with moisture. It just turns white. It's not clear and it's like that's not what you want, but there it is. They're just unsightly, unusable pieces. And I'm looking at that and I go, well, that's kind of cool, but it's moon. I don't think that's what we want to do. You, we want to have a bubble free, but also a clear impression and none of those are it. So I learned a lot. I wasted a bunch of material and I'll show you how not to do that. As I said before, I'm going to go over the eight steps as quickly as I can. And so that you understand it's so important to follow each one. The first thing that's super important is to prep your mold, make sure there's no dust in it. I use alcohol wipes and avoid any kind of dust, any impurities inside. It needs to be perfectly smooth and free of any particles. Anything that you place inside the mold, like flowers or whatever you want, you want it to be really super dry. And that takes us to number two, avoid moisture at all costs. That's the most sensitive part of urethane and we're using urethane to cast with, which is probably the most sensitive material as far as moisture is concerned in the casting materials. But I love the Illuminite Clear Slow Set because it gives you working time so you can add any colorants or any other materials into the mold. But at the same time, the moisture sensitivity is super major. The next number three is super important that you follow the directions. You really need to know your product. Aluminite clear, unlike uh, epoxy resins, it's actually measured by weight. 
I use a gram scale and I'll show it to you when we go to our casting room and grams are a lot more accurate than ounces so you want to measure it in grams and it's super sensitive to that if you don't measure it exactly right one to one ratio and volume is totally different than the weight so it won't mix properly it won't harden right there might be other issues that I don't even know about because that's something I did, did pay attention to to begin with. The fourth one is to really make sure that when you do mix the material, you mix it thoroughly. You mix the sides, you make sure you scratch the bottom with it. You cannot be more careful with that. That's super important. Number five, you definitely have to use a pressure pot. I have tried all different ways not to have bubbles and really there is no way to be bubble free except using a pressure pot. Now what a pressure pot does, it removes the bubbles in a way that's not removing them from the actual resin. What it does, it makes them tiny, tiny so you cannot see them. It basically compresses the bubbles to the place where they're not visible by the naked eye. So they're still in there you have to understand that the pressure has to be on the entire time that the material is hardening because if you take the pressure off the material the bubbles will start getting bigger again and you won't end up with a bubble free solution so so you definitely have to keep that on there as long as your urethane is hardening the entire time so you have to know your product i use 40 to 60 psi as far as the pressure inside the pressure pot for small castings, larger one needs about 80. So my pressure pot goes up to 90 and I go less than that, I go 80. And that's safe and I don't wanna exceed the maximum safety um, arrangement with my pressure pot, but it's really important to keep the pressure up. So I just go a little higher, it doesn't hurt anything and it maintains the pressure the whole time. Number six is super important that you know that as the material hardens, it's an exothermic reaction. So what that means is that the material gets super hot. So when you pour it in, pour it really slowly, understand your material, don't put anything that will melt inside because you'll be really disappointed. Number seven, it's important to keep the whole item under pressure until it's ready to demold. That is my thing that I do. I don't think it's necessary, but that ensures bubble-free castings. I don't know when, after the setting is done and the initial set, whether the bubbles will get bigger again if you took the pressure off. So I just leave it for four hours. That's the demolding time. And I feel really safe with that and I don't want to play around with ruining my material because I've done that before. And then the last thing, which is number eight, start small, experiment, make sure everything is set to the standards I just mentioned. You don't want to use a bunch of material and then have it go white on you or have bubbles or some imperfections in there. So just learn how to do it first before you start with a huge globe or a huge paperweight or whatever it is. So let's venture into my pressure pot room and casting room and I'll go over some of these things and show you how to do it. Now we're in my casting room and I know there's a little echo in here because it's really a laundry room and it's all hard material but here's a scale that I'm going to be using. There's a link below to that scale. It's a really great scale. It's uh, not an ounces. I put it into grams and here's the slow set aluminite A and B and I will be measuring it by weight. So that's the next step. I started out with nine grams. So now I have to figure out how much to add of the B solution. The next one I'm gonna be adding is part B at 220 grams. So I have to really watch the scale. Well, 
We have 15 minutes. I'm gonna move this over. Because we have very little limited time and I don't want to be mucking up the mold, I'm going to place this in there so we can take it out easily. And I'm going to put the mold in here and it's already been leveled. It's very level, it's very important. And I'm going to go ahead and pour this in while it's in there because I do not want it to move. And we have a little bit of time. There are little bubbles forming. I hope you can see it. It's hard to film. And I'm going to fill it up to almost the edge. What I like to do is remove some of these bubbles from the very surface. I find if I don't do that, a lot of those for some reason stick around. But I got to get this pressure on before it starts setting up on me. So we've got a couple more minutes of playing around with this thing. All right, looks pretty good. No huge bubbles left. I already have the pressure pot ready to go and my compressor is pressurized. All right, so. It's important to tighten every other. This always makes me nervous. The goal is to tighten it up so there's no air exchange. I have to tell you that I have never encountered such difficulty with this pressure pot. I know I don't have it screwed into the table and I should. Definitely it would make it easier, but oh my gosh, I had to unscrew it and screw it back up. The entire time that it was pressurized, there was air escaping and hissing and I was really concerned about my neighbor next door that they would be hearing the sound of the compressor constantly going. But I made it through, nobody called me, nobody was knocking at my door, being angry. So I made it through, but man, that was not fun and I will definitely have to change what I'm doing. The other thing that I noticed that the base of the lid of the pressure pot had a bunch of moisture gathered around it. It was actually having water drops come down and the compressor was getting really hot because I could not close the pressure pot. So it kept going on and on. I was concerned about the heat generation. Man, this is not so easy. And a lot of people on YouTube and when you look at these compressors, they make it look so easy, but it really isn't. And it requires a lot of practice and doing all the right things to the pressure pot so that this does not happen. Because there was so much condensation of water around the lid of the pressure pot, I was very concerned about the moisture getting inside the pressure pot and ruining my mold that I worked so hard to make it right and show you how to do it right. It's kind of embarrassing. After 20 minutes of struggle, the resin still looks runny, so I'm hopeful that this is not a total waste. We'll see. Wow, I have to say that was totally exhausting. Being a small person and having a strength issue, plus my pressure pot not being bound to the table makes it really difficult for me to pressurize. And sometimes it's easy, sometimes it just happens, but sometimes it doesn't and you just saw what happened. I really had a hard time with it. I finally did it, but it took a really long time. So we'll just have to see how this all works. I was only able to pressurize it to 50 to 60 and it's not a huge casting, so I think it'll be okay. But I'm telling you, I need an elf. I need a strong elf or something, um, or maybe just bolted down to my table, right? <laughs> 
Well, it's time for the unveiling. We'll see, I turned the pressure off. I removed any kind of pressure that's in the pressure pot. I saved that some time, so let's lift this up and get it done. So first we gotta undo these. Ugh. I gotta lift some weights, that's it, for sure. unveiling uh. wow it looks pretty darn good shocking Let's see if I can get it up there it looks pretty clear I cannot believe it um, I'm not gonna separate it for another couple hours it's been only a couple hours right now I'd like to wait for our wait before I can take it out of the mold so the demolding time is four hours and that's when I'm going to wait or maybe even longer so we'll see you then well I promised you an adventure and I delivered one maybe it's not the one you expected but it was kind of funny and embarrassing at the same time but I wanted to share it with you just because art isn't always easy and it's not what you expect sometimes so now we're gonna go to my studio and unveil the product. I'm hoping the paperweight will be clear and the casting is really perfect without bubbles. I'm down in my studio and we're ready for the unveiling, so let's take a look. I can't believe how well this turned out. It's totally bubble free, it's beautiful. I don't deserve it because of what I did and struggled with the pressure pot, but I guess I'm a lucky girl, right? As you can see, there was nothing simple about this tutorial. I was hoping it would be, as you know, and it wasn't. So I hope you enjoyed it and you liked my adventure and you learned a lot from it. I know I did. And if you liked it, please subscribe and hit that bell so you know when my videos come out and that way you're notified. Also, my website is down there and also there are links to all the materials I use today, including the equipment. I kind of butchered the equipment and I, it's, it's wonderful equipment. So don't take what I did as this is how it is because it really isn't. With that, I want to thank you so much. Bardzo dziękuję. Thank you so much in Polish. Happy arting. Until the next time. <laughs>